Houdini 19.5 was just released today, and I wanted to take a look at some of the new features inside of it. Now, I'm not going to take a look at Karma today, so hold off on that. That'll be coming in the future. Um, I'm also not going to really dive super deep into Flip Fluids, just going to kind of take a surface level look at that. But that is all been changed inside of Houdini 19.5 but I wanted to take a look at some of the other tools and different things that they have changed. So first of all, I'm just gonna drop in a geometry node here. And one of the first things that I noticed was the new spiral and helix tools. So we had the labs spiral. We also now have this helix tool. So pretty much the same thing that we had before, uh, just a little bit different settings compared to the old labs tool but you can still get the same sort of results here and there's also these radius ramps and this height ramp which is pretty cool you can do some really interesting things playing around with these different settings which wasn't available inside of the labs tool which is pretty cool to see uh, the helix tool as well kind of got a little bit of the same setup as the spiral and also has these height ramps. It's kind of based off of this spiral, just some different um, default settings there. Nothing too complex there, but it's something that's kind of just sitting up here at the start of Houdini uh, 19.5. The big thing for curves is that they allow you to change the tangents, at least in my uh, opinion this is kind of the big thing for it so if i drop in a curve here let's go ahead and just kind of draw one out draw something somewhat complex ish just give us some little weird shape here so once i have this i can hit enter and then if we come over to this little orient mode or if we press o with our little tool tips here these different settings will change between or these different keys will change between the settings. So F, G, H, and O. O gets you to the orient mode. And if you look here, I can click on a point with my middle mouse button, and that brings up this little rotation thing. And as you see, if I zoom in here, you can see these little green and blue lines. So I start to drag this around. You can see the green lines start to change, and that's gonna be our tangents. So we can use this to control the way that things are copied along the curve. So if I just drop a convert, we're just gonna convert this to a polygon. And then I'm just gonna do something simple with an attribute wrangle. And I'm just gonna set our normals. So at n equal to at tangent. And I'm just gonna do a copy to points now. So copy to points. Just wire that up and let's do just a simple box and let's just bring these down a little bit so this is going to copy the point or this box along the normals or with the normal facing up so if i come back to this curve and you see that i still have my handle here as i start to drag this around it's going to start to affect the way that these are being copied along I can mess with each individual point here. So obviously the first one's going to kind of move along the rest of the curve, but you can do these by point specific and they kind of adjust accordingly. So you can really mess with these and do some cool things that a, a nice demonstration with the sort of racetrack thing and their demonstration. Um, pretty simple thing that you didn't really have the best control of before so this is nice to see that it has come into houdini with this new curve tool settings so another thing here if i drop in a sphere go ahead set the display flag there let's just go to a polygon we'll up the count here quite a bit let's get out of our edit mode here and then we have our group and then our delete nodes which have been updated so if i go ahead and just wire those in we'll take a look at the group first we have a new setting here so if i just disable this base group and come down to this keep by random chance we can now create a random grouping which is pretty cool you can use this for a lot of different things 
just to kind of create some randomness. You obviously have your global seed. You can also drive it through a seed attribute um, and then control the percent, obviously. You can either use a blast node after that, or you can just use a delete node. If I come and this also over to the, to the random, this also has a random um, setting here. So we can change the random seed and that's going to, or the random percent random seed, that's going to just delete the random faces on our object here. So a couple different ways to do a couple of different things there. And that's a nice little addition that I think we'll see used in a lot of different setups. And then kind of the big thing that I see inside of SOPS now is the flip fluids. So not going to look at these too much, but you have a bunch of different settings here. If I go ahead and select one of these flip configure nodes and drop it in and we have a nice big setup here, help you kind of get up and running with the flip fluids just to start off. And if I click play here with this little lava solver, it's going to give us a little lava simulation inside of this flip solver all inside of SOPS, which is going to be nice to see. Obviously everyone's most comfortable in SOPS because that's where you do, I'd say probably most of your work inside of Houdini if you're using it um, consistently. So you're probably going to be doing everything inside of SOPS or most of your stuff inside of SOPS. So the more things that are available inside of SOPS that you don't have to, you know, go through different uh, loopholes to get to, then that is going to be ideal. And we have a couple of other different settings here or different choices for our flip fluids. Can get a bunch of different things here, just set up super quick with these different nodes. But overall, that's uh, kind of the big things that I noticed, like they said in the presentation, this is not really meant to be a like massive update. It's kind of gonna be more of a quality of life type thing. There's a bunch of things on the website and let's just take a look here at the this little rubber toy melting across our scene. It's kind of cool. But there's a bunch of things on the website and actually one of the big things, if you're looking to jump into Karma that I've seen, let's go ahead and pull up the website. If you come into this what's new in Karma page, you can scroll down, obviously see everything that's new in Karma, uh, random walk SSS. That's pretty nice to see uh, as well as bump mapping through material X, a bunch of different things in here that is going to be super nice to see. But if you haven't used Karma at all, you can scroll down and see this Karma user guide. And if you click that it brings you to this page that gets you a little bit of an up and running inside of karma. If you've never used it before, you can kind of go through these things, look at the getting started, kind of take a look through the documentation. Houdini's documentation is uh, pretty well set up. I've looked at it quite a bit. There's also a new cylinder light, I believe inside of karma. So that's kind of good to have. Obviously the more light choices that you have, the better. And karma is faster than ever with, uh, the new updates that they've they've put in. So lots of cool new things inside of 19.5. Definitely take a look at them. Uh, a lot of stuff with kin effects and some different things with the character effects as well. It's kind of what I would consider the major updates to this, which I don't use all that much, but uh, in the future, I may be looking to, to get more into that. I'm definitely excited to take a look at this flip fluids inside of SOPS. It's definitely something that I haven't played around with as much as I would like to, but I'm definitely looking forward to, to getting into that. But take a look at all the different things inside of 19.5, get yourself uh, downloaded and you know take a look at Solaris and, and Karma and see if you even want to have a external or a third party render engine. But anyways, uh, stay tuned for more stuff on 19.5. Definitely going to be doing more stuff with that, taking a look in depth more at some of these other different things. Like I said, Karma is probably the biggest one that I'm looking forward to just because it's obviously render engine. I enjoy taking a look at the different render engines that are available. So stay tuned for that. But I do have a bunch of other stuff on Houdini. If you want to learn more about Houdini, 
make sure to check out those videos and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the new stuff that's coming out with Houdini 19.5. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy Houdini news update and have a good day.